I'm heading to Germany tomorrow, which is probably a week or so ago by the time this video is released, but amongst other things, I'm going to be catching up with a good friend of mine who hunts for mass assignments everywhere, and it also happens to be one of my favourite vulnerabilities, so today I thought I'd do a video on mass assignment and how you can find and exploit it. If you enjoy the video then don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's dive in. So before we dive in, let's quickly take a look at some theory for mass assignments. And mass assignment basically happens when a backend takes all of the inputs from a request and blindly uses it to create objects or update a database object without checking that the fields are allowed. So for example, let me just pull up gedit real quick. If we have something like this JSON request and we've got, let's see, this here and we've got a username is Jeremy and the password is let's say let me in like this and here we have a normal user and basically if they're trying to log in or let's say they're trying to update something in their profile they might have something like profile picture equals cat.jpg and the mistake here is to take all of this incoming data and just throw it directly into the user object. So if we're in, for example, our post request here in the back end, so we'd have something like app.post slash register or app.post uh, forward slash update profile. And we had something like const new user equals like this. And then in here, if we use the spread operator, so if we do something like request.body, all we're doing is grabbing all of this data and assigning it to new user. In fact, there's no need to have this on two lines. We can just do this on a single line. Now, this might be okay if the user uh, uses the application as intended, but of course, if we simply intercept or modify the traffic on the way to the server, so even with a local proxy, we can cause some kind of impact. So instead of sending this username, password, profile picture, we could send something like username, password. And the typical example that we usually go for is, is admin true like this. And then this automatically gets assigned to this new object. And so in this way, if the application uses this property here uh, to determine whether somebody is an admin or not, we would then become the admin. Now, this seems really simple and you'd think, oh, well, just assign things manually. So be like, hey, username equals the username, password equals the password, profile picture equals the profile picture, and then role is default user, for example, uh, rather than it taking it in. But in a lot of cases, applications have really large, complex, and dynamic objects that might have lots of different properties. A very simple example is if you are on something like eBay, for example, you might be able to create custom properties for the thing you're selling. So for example, you might have size, color, shipping category, tags for different things, all sorts of things. And if we were to obviously assign everything one by one by one by one, it would be like a million lines of code just being like, if there is a medium size and not a color, for example, then create this object and it would just be an impossible task. So creating objects dynamically is important, but of course, making sure that we filter properly and make sure that users can't impact a sensitive or dangerous field is also really, really important. So let's take a quick look at a lab. In today's digital landscape, practical skills are key. TCM Security Academy offers training that's rooted in real world application. Learn real world skills from industry experts that will teach you hands-on skills that will prepare you for any cyber challenge. Transform theory into practice at academy.tcm-sec.com. And before we dive in, something to remember is that we can find information about our target application in a number of different ways. So maybe we don't know the is admin field name, maybe it's role, maybe it's admin, maybe it's subscriber, maybe it's something else entirely. Um, it's worth looking into the claims of JSON web tokens, 
uh, having a look at front-end code. Obviously, if the application is open source, you can just go in and get the names from there. Um, we can also fuzz for these, uh, etc. So there are a number of different ways to actually find what a property value needs to be. So here I'm just going to pull up Web Suites, and we've got a small application that I built called Ottergram, which is basically Instagram for otters. So if we sign up, let's sign up with Jeremy, Jeremy at jeremy.com and Jeremy and let's do let me in like this. You can see people come in and post their cute otter pictures and why would you not use this every single day, of course. Now, if we wanted to explore the application, we might come in, we might create a post. So let me pull up uh, Elfie and write a caption, I also like cats, and let's share this post. And then we can come in and comment and share. And we also have a profile update here. So for example, we can edit profile, and I also like cats, for example. We can modify our profile. So the first thing we want to do is find where we can get the user data for our user object. And in this case, I think usually in, if we go to somewhere like the profile, so if we get slash API slash profile for Jeremy, and let's pull this up. In fact, let's send this to repeater. We can see we have our user object and we have the ID, username, email, full name, bio, profile picture, and the role here as well. So in this case, the API endpoint is quite chatty, which is what APIs are meant to do. They're meant to give you information. And this is why sometimes they also um, give you useful information that we can work with as an attacker. And here we're going to target this property. Now, next thing we want to do is find a place where we can update our user. And I think, for example, with APIs, we could maybe just set, change this to put and then copy and paste the payload and then update what we want. Or we could do it on registration. So for example, if we come back here and scroll down, we have slash API slash register. Maybe we can append it to here. But in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to just take the put request for the slash API slash profile, and we're going to send this to repeater. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this here, come back in. We need to add a comma so that we can add another property and then we're going to come in and just change this to admin. And if we don't know what value we need, for example, uh, this could be super or user or root, or it could be some kind of secret. We might have to fuzz for this, but in this case, I think we can just hit send. We get profile updated successfully. Now that doesn't necessarily mean the, the attack has worked. It might just mean that the full name and bio has been updated and then this has just been discarded. So sometimes applications, when they're set up securely, if they receive data that it shouldn't be processing, it just discards it, which is quite a nice practice. But what we can do is come back to the application, refresh the page, and you can see that we have indeed become an admin. And that's basically mass assignment in a nutshell. And it's worth noting that a lot of uh, frameworks and things uh, support mass assignment. Ah, yeah, so there are a bunch of different names for this. Um, people use different ones. So overposting, auto binding, object population, mass population, model population. These are all basically different names for the attack, which is mass assignment. And it's a super interesting attack because in many frameworks, it's actually a feature. And then we can go in and start impacting fields of objects that we have no business uh, impacting. So I hope you enjoyed the demo and that's it for today. And that's it for today's video. I hope you found it useful. And if you did enjoy it, then once again, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time.